Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and in this video I'm going to give you a quick look at the beta version of Luminar 4 and in particular I'm going to talk about using the sky replacement filter. So just to make it absolutely clear that this is a beta version and what you're going to see here isn't finalized yet so some things may well still change. Um, I'm not going to go through the full features of Luminar 4 in this video so this is just kind of more of an advanced look. So I'm going to start by using it as a plugin from Photoshop and Luminar 4 combines the functions of Luminar 3 and Luminar Flex so you can use it as a plugin and you gain all the advantages that you gained um, using Luminar Flex so it works as a smart filter. And that's what I'm going to do here because this is a smart object that I've opened in Photoshop. And I'm just going to send this to Luminar 4 by using filter, Scalum software and Luminar 4. Okay, so our photo is opened here. And the first thing you'll notice is that the interface has changed quite a bit. So before you had to add filters and you kind of had a list that you could go through, whereas now all the filters are there by default. Um, some of them have been combined and this is kind of just to streamline the interface and also to improve speed at least that's what i've been told um so you kind of you start with your essentials so this is like things like exposure and so on and then we have our ai modes here as well um so we're going to start with this so i'm just going to drag up the accent ai so just kind of to give us a start here and i'm going to use ai structure as well so as I said, just to bear in mind again, this is a beta version, so the interface may well still change a little bit before it's actually fully released. So I'm going to start by just doing some kind of main tweaks to the image. And let's see, I don't want to do too much to this just yet. So that's kind of my basics. And I'm now going to pop over to the creative side, or to the creative tab. Um, so here you can see we have our sky replacement. So I'm going to go in here and pick a sky. So let's pick one of the dramatic sunsets. Now you can use your own files for this as well. Um, but there is some, there is a good few here already. Okay, so that's actually not bad. So let's go with this for the moment. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to adjust the horizon. So I'm going to bring it up slightly because uh, it's kind of overlapping the scene. Now, normally this does a pretty good job of um, separating them out, but because this is fairly faded in the background, it's having a little trouble getting the keying. So I'm just going to use this close gaps feature in the advanced settings. So what that does is it basically tweaks the mask. And as you can see, that is a little bit better. And I'm going to turn the sky local. I'm going to adjust this a bit as well. Okay. And that is a pretty good key. Um, so basically, uh, even though this is using AI, it's not perfect in every situation, but they have given you the controls that you can adjust it and you can generally get a pretty good. Um, so if I was to go to something like this, say, you can see that works quite well as well. And then if I turn again, if we turn this off, and that's pretty good. You also have this relight scene option slider, so that will actually adjust the colors further. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I found is that those kind of darken it a little, um, but we then we can adjust the exposure down here as well. That's actually pretty good. I like that. That's giving me a nice kind of dramatic look. Okay, so we can turn that off and back on. And then so if we go up here and see our before and after view, before, after. So you can see that's made a big difference to our image. Now we can take this even further. So I'm going to add another layer, add a new adjustment layer. And what I want to do here is I want to actually just uh, add some more detail into the foreground city and I don't want to affect the sky too much. So I'm going to add a mask. So I want a gradient mask. And oh, I'll do this the right way around. Okay, I'm just kind of drag this down a bit, maybe make it a bit softer. Okay, so now anything we add here will be just on this layer. So I'm gonna maybe add some details. Okay, and let's see, we use the landscape enhancer as well. So maybe a little bit of DAs. 
I don't want to do too much because I don't want to make it look like it's a totally affected image. The idea here is to keep it fairly natural looking. Um, so that's not bad. If I go back up here to layers, I can rename this layer. Rename layer. I'll call this foreground enhance. Okay, so I'm going to add one more layer and just do kind of some stuff on top. A new adjustments layer. And in this case, um, I have some looks down here, and these are some looks that I downloaded from the Skylum website. So I kind of like this one here. So that makes it really moody, but it's a bit strong, so I'm just going to fade this back a bit. Maybe to about 50%. Oh, and I, I don't I need to turn that off. Okay, so there is our before, and there is our after. And that's pretty impressive. Because um, normally to do this, you would require a lot of masking and keying and um, doing very different various effects. So the fact that you can do this with relative ease and with just a couple of slider changes is is pretty impressive in my opinion. Um, I'm sure the downside of this is that we're going to see a raft of uh, images with skies replaced in them. But um, again, if you're using it from a professional point of view in a creative way, I think anything that speeds up your workflow is definitely a good thing. Okay, so I'm just going to click apply here and we can go back out to Photoshop. So if I turn our smart filters off here, we can see the original image and then that is the edited version. So as you can see, that is a quite a dramatic edit and with just a few clicks. So yeah, so there is the before and there is the after. And the beauty of this, because we've applied it to a smart filter, I can just double click on this and go back in and re-edit. So now that we're back in here, I could uh, adjust anything I want. So I can bring the opacity of this graded layer up a bit more if I wanted to make it more dramatic. Um, and then I could go back and tweak any of the other filters and it's all kept non-destructive. So then once I'm finished, I just hit apply again to send it back to Photoshop. Okay, so there we are back in Photoshop. So that is a super quick first look at um, some of the features of Luminar 4 and in particular the sky replacement feature. Um, I hope you found this interesting. I will have some more Luminar 4 videos over the next few weeks as we get closer to the release. And if you have any questions about Luminar 4, please leave them in the comments below. So thank you for watching and thank you to all my Patreon supporters who help support this channel. If you're interested, check out my Patreon page. Link will be in the description below. And if you are interested in Numenar 4, you can pre-order it now and I'll have a link in the description below as well. And thanks everybody for watching. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a million. See you next time.